in this race, who knows? I mean, American Catholic voters are not a monolith. Mm -hmm. The doctrine is the same, but the Catholic voters are not a monolith. I mean, it is based on uh, region, it's based on age, it's based on uh, just other beliefs. So I think the significance here, it's really one more thing in a pattern of this pope uh, who is seen as, as much uh, a more liberal than some would like here, and some he's seen as exactly right, uh, like the uh, Jesuits, as we were talking about earlier. But uh, the, uh, I think equating the immigrant language uh, with the um, with the abortion issue is quite interesting, and it's something we don't hear the church here talk about a lot, like executions and the death penalty. We mm -hmm. don't hear that with the same weight as we do the abortion issue. Of course, the numbers are different, but I think it is very interesting. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm not sure this sways the vote at all mm -hmm. in big uh, Catholic states like Wisconsin, like Pennsylvania, but it certainly is food for thought. Well, and he didn't pope, say, oh, go ahead. This pope has thumbed his nose in somewhat diplomatic ways at Donald Trump before. The encyclical he gave him when Trump came to visit was entirely about environmental stewardship uh, and climate change, right? The idea that you need to be protecting the earth. This to somebody who is effectively has been, had been a climate denier. Uh, he's also been rather generous given the, the uh, church's history when it comes to tolerance of gay and lesbian individuals as well. So in that sense, the Catholics who wish for a more conservative Catholic pope may not be swayed by this, but he certainly does speak to that broader sense of Christianity, social justice, and I think just faith-based social justice, that uh, the least among us taking care of those, that is an immediate reference to refugees and immigrants. Aaron, you